Not hey, Gary, guess. thank you so much. Right now, though, our next guests are Jack Harrington and Nathan Walls, two University of Notre Dame's current School of Architecture students who carried out some fascinating research on traditional brick making at a historic kiln in the central Italian region of Umbria. Yeah, this is a lot to digest. So, Jack and Nathan, thank you guys so much for being with us here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. So, first off, can we talk a little bit more about your research that you guys conducted last summer? What is that and what did you learn? Yeah, for sure. So, what I have here are three bricks. This one is a standard modern brick. Mm -hmm. So, this was made on an extruded press, pressed through a die, cut with a wire, probably electronically fired, mass manufactured for sure. And I found this in the parking lot this morning. Oh my, <laughs> so, well, easy pickings. <laughs> yeah, easy. And that's in contrast to this one, which this is a brick in Professor Stephen Hartley's brick collection in the School of Architecture. This one was made by American slaves in the early 1800s. So you can see what 200 years of construction can do for the difference in bricks. And Luigi Bernasconi is the one that made this one. So our project, with the help of Professor Paolo Vitti, the Nanavik Institute for European Studies, was to figure out the differences between this brick and these two bricks and why those differences are important. And that's something that you guys have been able to learn over at the Bernasconi facility. What makes those studies so important to me? I see a brick and a brick, but to you guys, there's so much more. Yeah, absolutely. So the Bernasconi bricks are used across Italy at virtually every important archaeological site. So that ranges from the excavations in Pompeii all the way to the Colosseum. The reason why it's important to use these sort of historically made bricks is as you're restoring the structures, you want the materials that you're using to be the same sort of, um, have the same sort of structural properties as what you originally had. Um, so the Bernasconi bricks are used for that sort of thing. They're used for new construction as well. Um, the Bernasconis have basically been making bricks the same way that the ancient Romans made them. And so this is active living tradition. Um, the, uh, um, it's hard to get young generations into these sorts of trades, and so that's why um, it's so important to be documenting things uh, the way that we've been doing it. And I love hearing from current students about the importance of this now, because that gets the younger generations excited about it too, you know? Absolutely. And we've been talking about the tangible. We're touching the bricks, we're feeling the bricks, but there's some intangible things that you guys have learned as well. Tell me just about that research and really both the tangible and intangible that you've understood from this. Totally. So we wanted to learn the tangible ways of how these bricks are made. So we looked at the tools, we looked at the clay, we looked at the furnace, we looked at just all the stuff you need to use to make bricks. And we did that in a whole bunch of different ways. We hand sketched a lot of things. We made measurements with different kind of scales and rulers. We used a lot of laser scanners to make 3D models and point clouds of the facility. It was a way of gathering information about what we need to make this process. But then there's also the idea of what happens when your dog walks across these bricks and they ruin them. What do you do? Like what happens when rain starts coming through the ceiling? What happens when the bricks aren't stacked quite right in the facility? All of these questions and answers come about when you actually do the work. So the intangible knowledge was talking to the people who actually make the bricks, having dinner with Luigi, having just immersing ourselves in the act of making bricks to learn how it works. Because there's a lot of stuff you learn from doing it with your hands. We take a brick, we take like a minute and a half to make this handmade brick and we drop it on the floor and it fails. Some of those guys like Valerio, he can do it in eight seconds flat and it's perfect. And so that's the information that you can't just look at and understand. You've got to do it and it's very intangible, but it was the most important thing we could find. And I feel like there has to be a lot of other insights and lessons that you also took from this research. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Absolutely. So we, we came into the project thinking to ourselves, let's go and let's learn how to do this so well that we can come back to the United States and replicate the process, which I think was a good goal. Uh, but we pretty quickly realized that it wasn't the most realistic thing because we learned the process is so responsive to the local conditions of that area. It's very much hyper-optimized to fit what is what's needed for that place. And so that's why it's so important to partner with the Nanific Institute to go there. Um, as the construction industry is working to deal with the like, mounting energy crises, I think the future might look something very similar to the Bernasconi process, where it's building traditions that are hyper-optimized and hyper-economically and environmentally efficient to meet a set of local conditions. And so it's so important to know where you're at, when you're at, and how you're making these things. We were just talking a little bit about the Clay Township here in South Bend, Indiana. That's where I grew up. And we talked about the clay that was used for those bricks even here in the area at Notre Dame. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I'm learning all sorts of fun <laughs> new things about my hometown. But you guys have futures as well outside of Notre Dame. Can you tell me a little bit about what is next for both of you? 
Bricks, of course. Hey! <laughs> I'm going to be using the bricks that I know how to make to help my architectural designs, and then I'm going to help my architectural designs influence my brick making. And hopefully the two will pair together quite well and through a uh, very awesome future. Mm -hmm. And similarly, we've developed, I think, a sort of blueprint for documenting these building trades. And as we move forward in our professional careers and practice as architects, want to continue, okay, let's look closer to home in the United States. Let's engage actively with the building traditions that we have here. Let's work with them as partners in the structures that we're producing. You're using those literal building blocks from around the globe to just bring that information to University of Notre Dame and around the country too. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you guys, thank you so much for all of your information this morning. I am so excited for you and your futures. We've got a local grad here too. Congratulations on your future graduation. Thank you. Hey, well, I'll have to see what's coming up next. But here on Notre Dame Day, Coming up next, we've got Jenna Liberto to see a little bit more about that Lego build of the main building going on. Jenna, I just saw this Golden Dome. It's so cool. What's going on here now? 